What are the keys for lasting resilience? Welcome to Tia Taxevity, where you get insights from insiders, our many clients and friends. I'm Pramod Sharma, your actuary at Taxevity. I help people transfer financial risks with life and health insurance. Our guest today is Cindy Stradling. Cindy, what do you do when you're not being interviewed? I do many things. I'm a coach, I'm a life coach, I'm a facilitator, I'm a training agent, I'm a mom, and I'm a grandma. What are the keys to lasting resilience? Well, there's four keys. The first one is awareness. The second one is commitment. The third one is action. And then the fourth one is staying the course. Okay, can you please tell us more about awareness? Well, awareness, I do a lot of coaching, as you know, and mm -hmm. uh, what I find is that people are actually not aware of sometimes even when they're stuck. What do you mean they're not aware? They're doing the same thing over and over again. They don't understand why they can't move forward. They're overreacting to things. They're actually not even aware emotionally how they're responding to life. And when we work with them, we get them to see how, because you know, there's, it doesn't matter what happens to you, it's how you respond to what happened to you. And it's very complex. And so we go through in my pro program, we have people go through exercises to help them understand how they, as an example, respond to criticism, how they express their anger. People don't often sit and take the time to understand those kinds of things. And when you understand that and you're aware of it, then you can make change. Okay, so can you give us an example? Say someone isn't aware that they're responding to criticism in a poor way. What, would, what kind of exercise would you do to help them identify that issue? Well, we actually have people pair up and we have different criticisms and we actually have them, uh, one will close their eyes and the other person will uh, say the criticism to them. We have a whole series of them and they actually came from people. When I oh. first put the program together, I sent it out to everybody, what was your worst criticism? I could not believe what some people had, had said to them. <laughs> it was like, wow, really? And so what it does is the person that's listening will close their eyes and what they'll pay attention to is in their body. Because if you get really quiet and get aware, and the, the key is nobody can hurt you or make you upset if there isn't at some level that you agree with them. So it's like, and as Eleanor Roosevelt says, nobody can make you feel unhappy or upset without your permission. Right. So it's the same thing. So as an example, one of the ladies in our, my last workshop she was very slim and there was a, a, a criticism about weight and she started to cry. Oh. And she did not realize that she still had, even though she wasn't overweight, she still had that trigger. So someone could say something about her weight, it could still trigger her and she could get upset about it and then she might not respond in a positive way. And yet you would look at her and she's thin. So though, if you don't agree with that, if you don't even know you're responding to it, I don't know if you've ever had a situation where someone just, it's almost like they overreact. It's like they say something and they totally overreact to what you're mm -hmm. saying. It's like, well, that really wasn't a big deal. Right. But if it's a trigger for them and at some level they, they've connected with that and they believe that, then they will overreact. That's the only way that that can happen. Whereas if they, somebody says something to them and there's no connection to it, it's like water off a duck's back. That doesn't even phase them. So, but once they know that, they can feel that, they've had that experience of it. The next time it comes up, they go, oh, that's the trigger I have. Mm -hmm. I'm so, gonna choose differently this time. It sounds like your exercise would be very valuable to people. I'm just listening to it, I'm thinking, yeah, that's a very creative way of identifying some issues. Yeah, it's fabulous. People love, all of my workshops are very experiential. It's not just a talking head. It's not theory. It's actually getting people to do things and express things and actually a lot of them explore things they've never even talked about before. I've had many people say, never even thought about that before. Never even thought of looking at my life in that way. Mm -hmm. The second key you identify is commitment. Please tell us more about that. Well. A lot of people ha require change in their life to actually have the full life that they want. And they can set goals. We can all set goals. But if you're not committed to actually make them happen, and I'm talking like a, a solid, strong commitment, not just a wishy-washy one. And what we do is we actually scale it on a scale between 1 and 10. And what we, we have people do is say, you know, when they look at their life, when have they committed to things before? and then never fulfilled on them. 
That's it's probably almost, a long list. It, for a lot of people it is. And at some level, they don't believe themselves anymore. At some level, at your unconscious, you've, it's, like, it's like, yeah, right. You well, said that before. But if you can change your commitment, and your, I always say your commitment has nothing to do with what you feel like. So if you're really committed to something, if you think of an Olympian, I always use that as an example when I'm coaching someone. So if you think of, a, uh, say, a swimmer that's an Olympian, they get cold, they get sick, they get tired, they have to go in the winter if they come to Canada, whatever. Do you think that they always feel like going and training? Hours that, and hours? That's a good point, right. But no, they do it anyway. they do it anyway. So really understand. The other part of that is once you understand what commitment really means, you're careful what you commit to. That's a really good point, yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So you're not just saying yes for the sake of saying yes. You go, whoa, how committed am I really to this? And it's a, a, I always say it's an inside job. because so you really go inside yourself and ask yourself what you're really committed to doing. This is my signature program, and I'm totally committed to taking it to the public. I do it corporately now, but I'm taking it to the public because the feedback that I'm getting is that people want this kind of thing. They don't even know they want it, which is really crazy. But mm -hmm. once they get it, they go, wow, I'm so glad I came. Mm -hmm. Your third key is action. Yes. We all know you can lay the best plans and lay the best laid plans of mice and men, as they say. Right. But seriously, nothing happens without action. And I'm not talking about just doing things. I'm talking about doing things with intention. I'm talking about the, the, it combines your commitment. So you're aware of something, you've made the commitment, now what are the actions that you can take? I always, when I'm coaching someone, I always ask them, what's the single tiniest action that you can take within 24 hours? Sometimes just having that light bulb moment that this is what you need to do and actually doing it, you will start to build your confidence, right? So the, the challenge is, is when you don't take action, when you have lots of great conversation, and you have lots of great ideas, or you go to a workshop, and you get the workbooks, you get all the notes, but if you don't take action, it, it doesn't mean anything. So, and that's the way to start to build self-esteem. I don't know if you're familiar with Nathaniel Brandon's no. um, book on the six pillars of self-esteem. And he talks about that. He said, you know, say what you do, and do what you say. And when you do that, your self-esteem just automatically goes up. Mm -hmm. And would you suggest that people start with small things so that they build up their self-esteem and then get on to bigger things? 100%. Because if you are not the kind of person who fulfills on the things that they said, your unconscious mind's going to say, yeah, right, you're not going to do that. And then over time, you're going to go, oh, I did that. Oh, I did that. And baby steps. It's, I always relate it just sort of like a baby. When, when your son was born, I'm sure the first time he stood up, he didn't just start walking. No. He fell down. And you didn't say... That kid will never walk and never try to encourage him to walk again. Of course not. You encouraged him, you kept him going, and you keep going, and you keep going. And it's amazing what people do over time. And it's just baby steps, but it's that commitment of one step at a time over time, and that's how they get there. Mm -hmm. Your keys make a lot of sense. And then the last one ties them all together. That is staying the course. Yeah. Well, the bottom line is you can make changes, and life happens as we know. So say as an example, you've set a goal to lose some weight, start an exercise program. Then all of a sudden, you know, your work changes, you've got company visiting, you get sick, you know, someone may have died in your family or life happens. And all of a sudden you put all that on side. And then three, four, five, six months down the road, you realize you haven't even gone to the gym. You haven't worked out. You can't do up your pants. You're like, oh, how did that happen? Right? So you need to have checkpoints. I say quarterly, and there is a quarterly follow-up with my workshop after the first three months. And I say quarterly check-ins, where you have it in a calendar, where you set time aside and say, okay, I set this goal, I said I was going to do this, I said I was going to do that, how am I doing? And then you can course correct. It's not about getting it perfect, it's not about doing it right all the time. It's like an airplane, an airplane is off track more than it's on and it still gets to its destination. So having those checkpoints along the way will be what you need to know, whether you need to course correct or change something. Okay, so it sounds like you're not talking about blame, whatever happened, happened, but here we are, what do we do going forward, forward. then? Actually, I have a favorite saying, it's called up until now. So whenever somebody is saying, I've never been able to lose weight, I've never been able to save money, or I've never been able, I always say preface it by up until now. I stop them in the middle of their sentence and I say up until now. Because what that does is it creates a whole space for something brand new to come. 
and it doesn't negate or judge the past, which is huge because you're not going to move forward near as quickly as you can if you're spending a lot of time and energy. And we've only got a finite amount of energy and people don't realize that. And you're going to spend so much time beating yourself up about something you can't even change. Mm -hmm. So when I'm coaching people, we really look at that, of ways to keep going, right? Just keep going no matter what. Mm -hmm. Up until now. I'm going to write that down because that's, uh, that's a very useful phrase. It is. What's your key message for the people watching today? It doesn't matter what happens to you. It's how you respond to what happens. We've all heard it before and it sounds like a cliche. But whenever I think of this, I think of Christopher Reeve. I mean, when he went from being Superman to paraplegic in a mm -hmm. matter of seconds, if you think about him, he could have disappeared. He could have felt sorry for himself. He did not have to become a spokesperson for spinal cord injury, and yet he did. And I can't even imagine the discomfort and the inconvenience of him getting around doing what he did, did. but he didn't let that stop him. We do not have to let the things in our life stop us. That's a pretty inspiring message. What's the best way for people to reach you? CindyStradling.com. All my phone number and contact information is there. Thanks very much for dropping by. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for the tea. Thanks for joining us for Tea at Taxevity. The Taxevity Insurance Advisory helps you understand insurance and bridges gaps in your coverage. There's no premium for peace of mind. How healthy is your insurance?